With the conclusion of the Democratic National Convention last evening, both parties now have their official presidential nominees. And the race to November 5th, Election Day, begins in earnest. Tonight, Judy Woodruff takes us back to both convention floors where she spoke to Republican and then Democratic delegates to get a sense of how they see the road ahead and the divide between the parties. It's part of her series, America at a Crossroads. In Chicago and Milwaukee, each party had the same goal, energize their voters. America's future will be bigger, better, bolder, brighter, happier, stronger, freer, greater, and more united than ever before. I will be a president who unites us around our highest aspirations. But with those messages of healing and unity, the consequences of putting Donald Trump back in the White House are extremely serious. Were also words of condemnation. In less than four years, our opponents have turned incredible success into unparalleled tragedy and failure. And on the convention floor... I think we're at a crossroads. A uh, house divided cannot stand. Those deep political divisions were about more than the candidates. Kamala Harris hadn't even become the Democratic nominee when Republicans met in Wisconsin. But they were about issues that define America and were top of mind for all the delegates we spoke to. I would love to say America is in a good direction right now, but it's obviously not the truth. Republican Alberto Herrera is from the border town of Mission, Texas. Unfortunately, Donald Trump, he's going to be blamed for all the stuff that happened the last four years, and he's going to try to repair it. And I think he'll do the best he can. And we as Americans, if we don't get our act together, it doesn't matter how much of a good president we have. It's going to be a hard, hard ride. I think the, the contrasting difference cannot be any clearer. Christian there, Figueroa is a Democrat you know, a from Southern California. The there is, you know, a set of people in the Republican Party that, that seem over the past few years, at least what I've seen, to choose violence, to choose division, to choose just ang anger and retribution as a method of, of leading, of so-called leading. Though all agreed political divisions are concerning, delegates had differing opinions on what's behind them. Republican Jesse Franklin Murdoch, also from California, focused on the media's influence. So I think that people who don't take the time to really think about every issue for themselves and just look online or turn on the TV, they may be well-intentioned, but they're sometimes misled. Democrat Robert Branscombe of Arizona said polarization in Washington is part of the problem. I think we got in this place because we went to the tribalism. You know, we Democrats, you know, we have our progressive side. Republicans have their MAG extreme side. And it, it came up, became unpopular to talk to each other. Wisconsin State Treasurer John Lieber served as a GOP delegate in Milwaukee. Even here in Wisconsin, you know, the friendly atmosphere has broken down in the last couple decades. Used to be uh, Republican and Democratic legislators could meet, go have a beer after session, and just talk to each other. But today that doesn't happen. We're not approaching politics like we used to anymore. But Virginia Democrat Caleb Fulford placed the bulk of the blame on the rhetoric on the Republican side particularly from the former president. Politics used to be a, a, a side topic. It used to not be sort of who you were as a person. We are now in a society where if you were a Republican or a Democrat, I can somehow self-identify you with a whole set of moral beliefs, set of judgments and opinions. And I think it comes from just like this politics of hate where it's Donald Trump, it comes from the top down. Alabama Republican delegate Logan Glass. President Biden saying things such as it's time to put the bullseye on Donald Trump. Well, President Biden got what he asked for. And, I, and look, I know President Biden didn't literally mean let's shoot Donald Trump. I know that. But that sort of divisive rhetoric is not helpful. Like many of the conversations happening across the country, ours eventually turned to some of the most divisive issues of the day, from immigration to reproductive rights. If you don't have abortion rights, then what other rights are you going to take away from us? Myself as an African-American man, you know, we have voter rights, we have social rights, you have uh, transgender, you have the Project 2025 talking about dismantling our government, taking away the education department, things like that. So those things really harm or hurt 
our country. I have so many friends that are immigrants to this country that are proud that they came through the immigration system the proper way, the legal way. Michelle Merrill so is the Republican friendly. State Committee woman for Broward County, Florida. I don't think others should be able to come across our board in hordes in, a, in an illegal way and just be here and be sucking up the resources of our government, of our schools, of the taxpayers when they didn't come here the right way. Republican delegate Susan Kokinda from Michigan pointed to the economy. People can't make it. I'm from the Detroit area which created the middle class where one income could support a family. Now five incomes can't support a family. That's what has to change. Despite their differences, they all agree that although difficult, bringing Americans closer together is essential. We kind of went for voting for something to voting against something, and I think that caught on in the last few years. North Carolina Democratic Delegate Kristen Robinson. We used to be able to sit down at the table and talk about issues, and it feels like we can't do that as much anymore, but I believe it's still possible. We've got to rein in the divisiveness with our political rhetoric. It's going to take the next generation of young folks to rise up and say, you know, we're not going to agree on everything, but we don't have to let our disagreements divide us so badly. What we should be doing is reaching out to people who are in our family, people who are, are in our friendship circles that may have very contrasting political views. And let's talk about why are we so passionate. And I think if we really try to work together, I think you know we can definitely lower the temperature and hopefully we can we can heal this country. The rhetoric all needs to calm down on both sides. We need to we need to remember we're Americans first. We're all suffering. We're all going through things right now. And we, we just have to walk in each other's shoes and be a little kinder and a little gentler. But it's not clear that this shift to kinder and gentler can happen anytime soon during a season of rough campaign combat with political leaders charging all is lost if the other side prevails. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Judy Woodruff in Milwaukee and Chicago.